Should you spend or save your resources in Marvel Strike Force? Buy or hoard? That is the question that all of us have been faced since our first day playing Marvel Strike Force. And there's positives and there's negatives for each. So in this video, I'm discussing the best ways for you to use your resources in the most efficient way possible in Marvel Strike Force. But I do have to have a disclaimer because all the tips I'm going to give you in this video, fun should be more important than all of that. At the end of the day, we're playing a game. We're playing a game on our phone, guys. And I, I, fun should outweigh a lot of stuff. It should outweigh efficiency. So if there's a team or a character that you really have a connection with, maybe you had some connection well during your childhood, maybe you saw them in an MCU movie or something, and, and you really like that character, and you realize they're not very good in Marvel Strike Force, but you want to build them anyway, then do it. If it's going to give you more fun in Marvel Strike Force, then do it. Efficiency is very important, but fun is more important so spend wisely have fun now if we're talking about spending wisely i don't think you could spend any more wisely than on your health and from our sponsor worldwide nutrition the sponsor of this video they've been helping people stay healthy since 2010 and now with a pandemic raging all over the world worldwide nutrition they have a bunch of immunity products to help to turn your body into a well-oiled machine so that you can smash any uninvited guests trying to invade your system. Let's check out some of their health and wellness products right now. They're so popular. They got some sold out. The vitamin D, the vitamin E, the omega-3s. They got multivitamins, but they also have products from other companies as well. They got vitamin Ds, other vitamins to help you stay at your best because you can't afford to get sick. I can't afford to get sick. So head over to WorldWideNutrition.com today and let them help you stay productive and live your best life. And don't forget to use the code VALLEYFLYING at checkout and receive 15% off your entire purchase and... Mikey B and the folks over at World Run Nutrition, they have the hookup for you. So with all orders, you'll receive sample of the Energy Nootropic Blitz as an added thank you. So take charge of your health and order Worldwide Nutrition right now. The link is down below, but let's go into Marvel Strike Force and discuss the efficient ways to build up your roster. And I think the biggest challenge that a lot of people have, some people have this challenge, some people don't. But it's gold. Gold is a major bottleneck for a lot of people. And if we go into characters, you pretty much need it for everything that you want to build with the characters, except maybe ISO 8. But to level up your character, to get them into a new level, you're going to need gold. And you're going to need training mats, but you're going to need a lot of gold. To up these abilities, you're going to need their ability materials, but you're going to need gold. To up their gear, you're going to need the gear, but you're going to need gold. And to get there, to promote them to the next star level, you're going to need those shards, but you're also going to need a lot of gold. So one of the major areas you can spend gold in is leveling of your characters. The other is actually getting the gear for your characters in the supply store. So what I've found is if, if people are spending a lot in the supply store, they're usually out of gold and don't have that training mat bottleneck. If they're spending a lot of uh, training mats and gold to level up their characters to get them to higher levels, they're usually have, are running out of training mats like I am. So uh, you need to choose. Now, what is the best way to get this gear or to level up your characters? I think that depends where you are in the game. So for myself right now, there's not a lot of content that I can't complete in Marvel Strike Force. So I'm just saving gear to hopefully get further along in D the Doom 2 raids and prepare for Dark Dimension 5. You may be in a different place. So you may be wanting to level up your characters. You may not need these uh, these uh, these uh, gear resources from the supply store. So uh, for most players, I would say level up your characters, get them to as high as you can. Uh, I'm at level 85. You may be at a different level, but get them, get them to where you need to be efficient. And remember when upgrading characters or uh, looking to upgrade these characters, you got to ask yourself, is putting an extra level, like for example, this Captain Sam, is getting him to level 84 going to help me in current content? And I've said this before, and I've said this uh, in the past, I'm going to say it again. I think the, the areas in the game that I think are the most important is arena because you get power cores from there. You get arena credits from there. Then you have raids. You're getting a lot of gear. And if you're trying to get into some dark dimensions, especially this dark dimension five, the only place that you could really get a uh, daily influx of this teal augmented gear, not spending a lot of gold is from these raids. So in my opinion, arena is first, raids are second for your resources. And war for me is last. Honestly, the rewards for winning and losing are not that different. And if you're getting a good ELO and you're getting good matchmaking, you should 
finish at a decent season ranking. So uh, I, I don't think war is that important unless you find it fun. Uh, I don't I wouldn't focus too much in war characters, but focus on your raids, focus in your arena. Uh, but like I said, fun is fun is in, more important than anything. So if you if war is your most fun game mode, then focus, focus your characters and energy on there. Now, uh, so you got to choose. Most people, I think building up your characters, building up certain characters is going to help you. And what characters do you build up? Well, I, I like to focus on two to three characters that you can effectively farm shards for, farm gear for, and really build up to get them effective. About two to three at a time. And I would focus on the two or three characters that's going to give you an immediate benefit right now. Perhaps they're going to give get you clearing the raids a little faster. Perhaps they'll get you an extra raid node. Maybe they'll get you a few more positions in arena. Uh, those are the characters that you should build up. Or if you're someone that really likes war, you know, a war offense or war defense character, but focus on two to three characters. That's going to help give you an immediate benefit in Marvel Strike Force right now. Those are who I would use these training mats on. Now, the other resource that we get very limited uh, supply of comes from arena and, and from some daily objectives as well, but it's these power cores. What should you spend power cores on? What is the most efficient method to spend power cores on? Where should you spend it? Well, uh, the place that I like to spend it is on these limited time events. We have a Silver Samurai event going on right now. I would spend all of the 50s. I normally spend some of the 100s, but basically I try to clear all the hard nodes every day. I go uh, I go into the mediums kind of on a field basis, but I make sure I get all the hard nodes per day. Uh, that is one area to spend your power cores on. Another area is this uh, campaign energy. Another effective area is this ISO 8 energy. But once in a while, and the, and that's what I would limit my core spending on. There's not a lot of great things to spend cores on, but once in a while, you'll have these uh, orbs in here. Uh, let, let's uh, let's say this tough as nails orb. Maybe, and now these are not a great value. Don't don't get be con, this confused with me thinking these are a great value. These are not a great value, but. Maybe you just need six shards, which is the bare minimum for a lot of these orbs. Maybe you need six shards to get Death Strike up to the next level. Well, that is that may be a time that you may spend these cores because normally with these uh, offers for these um, for these orbs for specific characters, normally we're not going to get these characters farmable for a little while. So uh, especially if it's a rare character that's not farmable, you could spend your power cores on them. Uh, let's talk about this ISO 8 energy as well. If we go to the campaigns, there's a bunch of characters that you could farm in the campaigns. And at, depending on the level that you are in a game, if you're a new player, you're going to want to farm these characters that will help you get to the next campaign node, get to the next raid. So you should focus on those characters that actually give you that immediate benefit, knowing full on that you may have to put them aside as you get to further, further content. But as we go through these campaigns, the characters that are in the campaigns that I'm using right now, at the end game stage, we got one in Villain 7-9. That is Iceman, part of the Axeman team. I would recommend building him as soon as you can, especially if you're going to be going to Doom 1 or 2 soon. That Axeman team is very, very strong. Uh, if you're into war defense, or maybe you have a that middle lane in Gamma, Iron Fist is also in Nexus. We got a bunch of characters in Nexus. Nebula, who's one of the linchpins of Arena right now on that Infinity Watch team, is also on Nexus 4-6. Beast, another member of that Axeman team, is available on Nexus 5-6. And Venom, yeah, the symbiotes got a, got a little bit of a not... I, I guess I guess they, they don't need as much love as we once thought. They're not as bad in Doom 2 as they were in Doom 1. So uh, Venom, Nexus 6-9. And then the newest farmable character, Captain Sam, is available on Doom 2-6. So those are who I would focus on if, if you've already unlocked the legendaries, you've unlocked all these campaigns, and, and you don't really have a issue with these. And you have all those uh, limited time events, like the payday event the chaos theory event you have the characters and you can complete all those those are the characters that i would focus on in the campaign nodes now let's go to the next store here and oh and as far as this gear here i uh, get what you need i would i would have a plan when building this and one of the best places to plan in my opinion is msf.gg uh, normally there's going to be a dark dimension. Your next dark dimension is what I would be planning for. For myself, it's dark dimension five. For you, it may be dark dimension two, three, four, or five, depending where you are in the game. But, uh, this helps me notice what resources I need. And this is taking a little longer to load than I thought. I, I guess I shouldn't have clicked through the dark, different dark dimensions, but, uh, there we go. As you see, you see the total materials required to get all of these characters ready. 
up to that next uh, gear level for Dark Dimension 4. Uh, this is what I would need. So this is this is a helpful tool to help you plan your roster a little better. And for Dark Dimension 5, you could go there and plan all these characters as well. But uh, get have a plan before you start... Uh, start gearing up your characters and building up your characters, especially if the next thing you're doing is one of these dark dimensions. So that is how I would use this gold in the supply section right here. Let's move on to the next door, which is the Blitz store. And we have a limited store here right now, which pops up every now and then. You usually get one of these per update. Uh, and I guess it's going to be different because all of these limited time stores have been different. I tend to focus on the character shards, but of course, this is a war offense character. And if we're going for the most efficient, again, we're going to focus on arena and raids for that efficiency, because in my opinion, those are the most, uh, they're, they're going to give you the most bang for your buck. All right. Uh, I, I tend to buy these war energy refills all the time. Uh, we have a pretty big abundance of these blitz credits. And if you uh, have unlocked blitz sim, I would recommend doing some sims as often as you have time, do as many rotations as you have the time for to build up these blitz credits. You get some every win. So the more wins you get, the more blitz credits you're going to get. Now, as far as the store itself, you got these catalysts. These are a big ripoff. I would not buy these. And you got some characters here. Now, again, like the campaign notes, you're going to have some characters that can unlock legendary characters. So if you're going for your next legendary, that may be the route that you are going to go. But as far as who I'm using right now, at the end game, not a lot of these characters, only Gamora in in the Infinity Watch team, sometimes as a backup skill character for Doom 2. And I guess Luke Cage. Uh, I, I, I don't like recommending the defenders like I didn't recommend. Uh, I guess they're not even defenders. Heroes for Hire, because I hate that team. But yeah, he, he's a very important part of the defensive meta. So still worth building. Uh, even for someone my, like myself that, that hates that Heroes for Hire team, still worth building up. So Gamora and Luke Cage are the two I'd recommend it from here. Uh, and White Tiger is pretty good. She's only available in the orb, though. I would Now, if you're a new player, don't have a lot of characters at seven stars, this Blitz orb is going to be your best bang for your buck. That's going to get you the most shards for the least amount of uh, Blitz currency. As you start to get more and more characters to seven stars, though, this Blitz Orb becomes less and less valuable. So keep that in mind. You may want to just buy stuff from the supply section, or you may want to just get shards, depending where you're at the game. All right, let's move on from the Blitz store to the raid store. And as you can see, I got a lot of raid credits here because towards the end game, not a lot to buy. Not a lot of orange gear to buy because I'm already through Dark Dimension 4. If you are not through Dark Dimension 4, you're going to want to stock up on this stuff until you have your team ready. And even, even if you have a lot of uh, stockpile of all these resources, you may want to stock up on some things that you don't have a lot of resources for. I don't I don't really spend a lot of raid credits, as you can see. We had over a million just a day ago. Sharon Carter just popped up in the raid store, so we started opening some of these orbs. These orbs aren't a uh, very good value, but again, like the Blitz Orb, if you don't need specific shards for characters and you just want to get the 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 most possible shards because you don't have a lot of characters at seven stars, well, uh, this is this is uh, what I would go. This is where I would get your shards from the raid orb right here. You don't get to choose, but in trading for that, you're going to get more shards for that at a cheaper cost. So uh, this is a very valuable thing for newer players. Older players, you get you could get a little more selective. Now, who would I focus on right now? Obviously, Sharon Carter, because she just got added to the raid orb. The only other character that's in the raid sword that I'm using on a daily basis is Kitty Pride. Again, some of these characters you may want to unlock because you don't have them unlocked. You may need them for uh, these, um, these legendary unlocks. But if you have that solved, you have all these limited time events solved. Uh, Kitty Pride. And Sharon Carter are the only two characters that I'm farming in the raid store. Let's move on to the arena store. We just had this new arena orb added, a little more expensive than the other one. And we have a limited time character always in this. Right now, the character is Phylavel, but we have these other characters that have a higher cost and then the lower cost. Now, when I'm looking through this roster of characters, obviously Phylavel is a good character, but I'm not going to count her because I don't think that this orb is a very good value. Maybe... If you have an abundance of your raid currency, and maybe if you need training mats, then you can bet this arena orb. Uh, it is a little more expensive than some of these cheaper shards, though. So it's not like the Blitz and the raid orb that I recommend for people that don't have a lot of seven-star characters. This, I would be very selective with it. Uh, and use this only if you have an abundance. Most of the time, I would buy these characters. Now, as far as end game characters that are used in a daily basis in the raids, uh, the only one I'm seeing in this store is Scream. 
So that's the only one I would recommend. Yes, there's a lot of good characters. Shatterstar is in part of that Adam Warlock unlock. We got some other legendary unlocks uh, here as well. But the only character that I'm really using and recommending is Scream. But uh, yes, if you need any other characters because you enjoy these characters, you need them for some other teams. Maybe you need more Blitz teams. Maybe you need some more War teams. Uh, there's some good characters in here. But they're probably primarily going to be used for war offense or war defense or unlocking legendary characters. So uh, keep that in mind. Shatterstar and Longshot, just not as valuable as they were once in Arena and the Raids. All right, let's move on from the Arena store to this next store, the War store, which is which is not the most friendly store, by the way. There's a lot of characters in here. We have 14 characters in the War store currently, and only three will show up. And the big thing with the War store... Do you buy these character shards or do you buy the gear? There's teal gear in here. We have orange gear in here. We have purple gear in here. So no matter where you are in the game, blue gear as well. So no matter where you are in the game, there's something for everyone here. And we have these other credits here. So for some war credits to buy more resources, you could spend your start tech credit on, on that. Elite war credits, which allows you to buy those orbs. And elite four credits, which allow you to open more red star orbs. You could buy some of this stuff. I think the elite credits are going to be the most valuable. But here's the thing. With these orbs, I would not open them right now. Because right now, the bottleneck for Dark Dimension 5 is teal gear. There's no teal gear in here. So uh, I, I might buy some of this stuff with my Star Trek currency. This elite credits. This elite war credits. And then just save it until we get the orange gear or the orange gear war orb number three. Which hopefully has that teal gear in there. So that's the big thing. Buying the gear through these parts or these orbs or buying the character shards. And really, at the end of the day, it's going to be dependent on where you're at in the game. Do you have these legendary characters unlocked? You have a lot of legendary unlocking characters in this. And there's a lot of good end game characters in the war store as well. But I think the ones that I'm using, the only ones that I'm using on a daily basis is going to be Carnage, Bishop, and Maria Hill. Very, very hard to get them to uh, pop up in this store because there's 14 characters. Only three will pop up at a time. And then Minerva, I use her as kind of a backup on the tech lane. Same thing with Ghost. So those are some other characters that you might want to consider. But again, it's going to be dependent on where you are in the game. If you're a newer player, you might need some of these newer teams to unlock some legendaries and to get through some of these campaigns. So uh, that is what I would base that on. But use your resources very wisely. And as far as this goes, the promotion credit store. And I've said this a lot on uh, mailbag videos, on news videos. If upgrading a character is going to allow you to do more content, then use your silver and gold promotion credits. If using these credits are going to do nothing and not allow you to progress and clear more content and get your and it will get your roster stronger because your total power will go up. But if it's not going to allow you to do more, then don't waste it. Save it for another character that will give you that benefit. So. And then same thing with these uh, ions, you know, you 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 wanna you wanna focus probably on one character at a time, you know. So right now I'm focusing on Sabretooth. I'm focusing on this class because that has the most, and then I'm just trying to do whatever has the least. A lot of times I go with what's the least because we have these orbs here in that uh, T T1 orb section here, and we got a lot of these that we've just been saving up. So uh, these are random that pops up. But uh, yeah, that, that's what I would, that's what I do. And those are my recommendations as far as best, most efficient way to use all of your resources. We did cover this a little bit in last week's video, but uh, I wanted to make a whole video on it because there's still questions on the Valley Club in the morning from this stuff. So hopefully this helps you. Hopefully this helps you to manage your resources and build your roster in the most efficient, most effective way and using the least amount of resources for it. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring that bell, guys. Join that uh, notification squad so you get notified as soon as a new video goes up. But I will see you guys tomorrow. We'll be back on the live stream, Valley Flying 76 on Twitch. And we got a news video coming up tomorrow on the main channel. So hopefully you guys, I'll see you then. Have a great rest of your day. Check me out on social media. Check out some of the links down below. Worldwide Nutrition, awesome stuff. Mikey B is an awesome dude. So uh, hopefully there's some stuff that you need on there that help your health. All right, fist bump, whole fist bump. Valley Flying out. Have a great rest of your day, guys.